trying to get this hair twisted. I wonder, I wonder what you would do if you had the power to dream at night any dream you wanted to dream. And you would, of course, be able to alter <laughs> Yo, what the hell are you doing up so early? And slip to what say the fuck? 75 years of subject to time. Gotta get this shit you done. Could design for yourself what would be the most ecstatic life. Love affairs, banquets, dancing girls, wonderful journeys, uh, gardens, music beyond belief. And then after a couple of months of this sort of thing and 75 years at night, You'll be getting a little uh, taste for something different. And uh, you would move over to an adventurous dimension. Where there were sudden dangers involved and the thrill of dealing with dangers. And you could rescue princesses from dragons. And go on dangerous journeys. Make wonderful explosions and blow them up. Eventually get into contest with enemies. And after you've done that for some time, you think up a new wrinkle to forget that you were dreaming. So that you would think it was all for real. And to be anxious about it. And then uh, it must be so great when you woke up. And then you'd say, well, like children who dare each other on things. How far out could you get? What could you take? What dimension of being lost? Of abandonment of your power? What dimension of that could you stand? You could ask yourself this, but you know you'd eventually wake up. Then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. Yeah, I, I don't let nobody do my hair. Where you are now. You would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living. I started today. my shit from day one. When I, I mean, within the infinite I've never been to a salon or nothing ever. Fuck that. that you weren't God. Because the whole nature of the God, according to this idea, is to play that he's not. idea that everybody is fundamentally the ultimate reality, not God in a politically kingly sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic whatever there is, and you're all that, only you're pretending you're not. <coughs> Yeah, put this in, spray this on it, and get to go. If, I don't know, like, <clears throat> I wish I could find somebody to, to do it sometimes, but, like, every time I ask for salon prices, everybody wants, like, 90 bucks. Oh, because your hair is kind of long to wash it, you know, for wash, condition, dry, 
a retwist in the set is gonna be like 90 bucks. Oh, uh, if we throw in a hot oil treatment, it's gonna be like a hundred and thirty dollars. I'm like, uh, I'd rather do it myself. <laughs> yeah. You know? I had one person tell me that they'll they'll do it for. Has nothing to think about except. I think fifty dollars or sixty bucks. I just I don't know. I just still just never went. Touch with reality. And live in a world of illusion. By thoughts, I mean specifically chatter in the skull. Perpetual and compulsive repetition of words, of reckoning and calculating. I'm not saying that thinking is bad. Like everything else, it's useful in moderation. A good servant, but a bad master. And all so-called civilized people have increasingly become crazy and self-destructive because... Through excessive thinking, they have lost touch with reality. That's to say, we confuse signs, words, numbers, symbols, and ideas with Put the, the real world. in there to hold it. Most of us would have rather money than tangible. Oh work. man, I would have been coming to you like crazy. And Thirty-five dollars. Somehow spoil first and let's photograph. Because I don't mind doing and it, but. To read about it the next this day shit does take a long paper. time, yo. That's why I, I have to get up early. <laughs> I get up like 4 o'clock in the fucking morning just to do my hair. This is a disaster. Just so I can do other or shit later on. Confusing the real world just even washing it sometimes after time. work. Like, oh my God, be so tired because from a 12-hour shift. And then, so I work four days. And the end of the last day that I work, I always wash my hair. So it's like, I'm already tired of shit. I already got to take a normal shower. And now I got to stand there for like an extra 25 minutes washing all this fucking hair. It's like, what the fuck? Then I got to get up early in the morning and do this shit. Because it isn't words. It isn't I know you go through it. All that fucking hair you got. Oh, my God. It isn't spiritual. Oh, that's what's up, yeah. Reality. Yeah, I can imagine like washing your hair and letting that shit dry. What the fuck? psychological and so on as an authority has this authority because of your opinion that he has or she has how do you know if you say for example like the protestant fundamentalist that you believe in the bible that the bible is inspired or you may say as a more liberal kind of Christian that Jesus Christ is the greatest being that ever lived on earth. How do you know? It's your opinion that that is so. Lots of people may have told you so, and you may be very impressed by those people, but you bought it. And so, therefore, if you say, well, I would like to become like that, that's an expression of the way you are. You couldn't feel, I would like to become like that, like the authority, like the Christ, except as an expression of the way you are now. And the way you are now is the quaking mess. Yeah, well, that'd be dope, yo. I swear. Once again, like, like I said, you got so much thick hair, too. I can imagine how your dreads will look, yo. Them shits would be like some fucking, some Damian Marley dreads. One of the appetites of your quaking mess. Yeah, that shit would look dope as fuck, yo. Throw a little bit of color up in that shit, yo. I can imagine. What you got on. By talking about the quaking mess. The quaking mess may be, in fact, something very, very natural. The way we are, 
the state of affairs. There is a fucking hole in my world. I'm not ashamed of it. I told you I was practicing. <laughs> but it is important not to fool oneself about this. But there does, doesn't there, seem to remain a problem about existence, about being alive. <coughs> now let's go into what is that problem. At this sort of nitty-gritty level. Very basic in our thinking is that we, as it say, one must live. We need to survive go on. We need, therefore, money for food, for this, that, and the other. We must go on. Yeah, yeah, that's and what I'm saying. With the, with the color in it? Mm -hmm. That we're not going to get away with it for very long. That after a certain number of years, we're going to die. The, the, the thing is going to end. The thing that we call I is going to be as it is in sleep. Deep sleep with no dreams. But that between now and that happening, there may be the most ghastly pains. Not only perhaps the pains of physical disease or being wounded or hurt, but the pains of worrying about our failure of responsibility to people who depend on us. And we suffer other people's suffering simply because we're sensitive and have imagination and participate in their sufferings. And our adrenaline and our chemicals respond simply by imagination to the sufferings of other people. And what about that? And so we can look at these problems and say, now, quite obviously, all these problems cannot be solved in a physical way. That is to say, we do not expect in our lifetime that medical skill will make us exempt from death. We do not seriously expect that human beings will all learn to be nice to each other and will refrain from war and horrors of that kind, racial prejudice and so on. We don't seriously expect to find a method of being protected by taking some sort of drug against all possible disease and pain. So therefore we say, now maybe there's another way around. I bet you are. Maybe. That instead of solving these problems at the technical level, we could solve them at the psychological and spiritual level by so disciplining ourselves, by so doing something with ourselves, that we wouldn't be afraid of it anymore. And so, in accord with that motivation, we seek out spiritual teachers, psychological teachers, this, that, and the other. Could we somehow be made over so that we don't worry about the quaking mess by a spiritual discipline or whatever. <clears throat> and you see if you examine that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know I do my own this area. Wanting to overcome the quaking I've seen mess dreads like and not have it anymore. That are really nice. That make me that fucking jealous like is the quaking mess. I know what really, really nice dreads look like. I know mines aren't the fucking best, but I don't think my dreads look too bad to say that I've never had anybody else do that shit, you know? I think they look okay. They look all right. Oh, wow, that's, it. that's what's up. I don't even think, like, I don't know. Only thing I say about dread, Joe, it don't really matter how they look. Everybody got different hair texture, 
you know, it's just different styles, different thicknesses, and dreads are dreads. However you want your dreads to look, however they grow, you can have them more uniform, more organized, more trimmed and shaped up, or you can have the thick, bushy, just wild dreads that are, you got one fat one here and one little one here and one, you know what I'm saying, however it is. But as long as it's, as long as you keep your hair clean and they don't stink, then I, it don't even matter what your dreads look like. I just, I just try to maintain mine and make sure I <coughs> just make sure I keep my damn hair washed, keep my scalp greased and moisturized. And that's it. Hygiene. You got long hair. You gotta take care of that shit. Just like brushing your teeth and washing your body and anything else, yo. I know I, I, I've ran into a couple people with, with long dreads and you get too close. It's like, what the, what the fuck, bro? You ain't wash your hair, motherfucker. You smell kind of rank over there. Fuck wrong with you. You making me look bad. That's why people look at me when they get around people like you. You know? Got represent for the dreadhead culture, man. Keep your shit clean. Nigga, is, is that your hair smelling like that? Nigga, when the last time you wash? I know my son, I started started his dreads this summer. But the star dreads, and he has, he has like really fine, a fine grade of hair, like white people hair. It's weird, yo. This is a black dude, yo. Like, my son is black. I'm black, his mom's black, you know, but it's like, this motherfucker got blonde hair, blue eyes, he got a soft texture to his hair, his his grandmother is like German and something, and well, his, his great-grandfather was German, black and German, and his great-grandmother was like... Italian and then some other shit. It was weird, yo, but all these genes then came down and he got impacted with a lot of these fucking European genes. That shit look weird as shit, yo. <laughs> Can't have my shit all different sizes and shit. Everything uniform in a straight line. Nice boxes. I don't need my shit all everywhere. However, this isn't as much of a blind alley, a cul-de-sac, as it sounds. Because if you discover a blind alley, it tells you something. Watch the flow of water when it crosses over an area of land. And you will see that it puts out fingers. And some of them stop because they come into blind alley. And the water doesn't pursue that course. It simply rises. And then it finds a way it can go. But it never uses any effort. It only uses weight. It takes the line of least resistance and eventually finds a course. Now we will do the same thing. Only we're ashamed of it. But we're going to do it anyhow. We think that when we come to a dead end, a blind alley, oh, I failed. Supposing the water 
at each place where a finger of water stretches out over dry ground and doesn't go any further because the land is too high, the water would say to itself, I failed. We would say it was neurotic water. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait, and it will find a way. Now, when you find, you see, that there's, there's this predicament that I've been describing to you, that there's no way of transforming yourself to become this fearless, joyous, divine being as distinct from the quaking man. When he says no way, this is not a gloomy announcement. It is a very, very important communication. <laughs> Telling you something. Because the, like the land is telling the water, this isn't the way to go. There's another way. Try over here. So in the same way, life is telling you that's not the way to go. It's telling you, the, the, the message underlying this is you cannot transform yourself. Is giving you the message that The you that you imagine to be capable of transforming yourself doesn't exist. In other words, an ego, an I, separate from my emotions, my thoughts, my feelings, my experiences, who is supposed to be in control of cannot control them because it isn't there. And as soon as you understand that, things will be vastly improved. Now, we can go into this. What do you mean by the word I? We're going to make some experiments number of different levels, but in the ordinary way, what do you mean by the word I? I myself. Your personality, your ego, what is it? Well, first of all, obviously, it's your image of yourself. Yeah, his, like, his grandmother, if you would have met her, you like, she looks... It's composed of what people she have She looks kind of white, but not people, really. Who you are, how they've reacted to you. And like his mom and and she has two brothers. It's all your and they all have like this, the style of life you put on and so forth. Not niggerish but type hair, but not exactly idea. white people hair it's either. Your about and yourself. Like and her I brothers, they have like light brown eyes, and she has things, green eyes. Which is crazy. You know, like she has these really light green eyes. Your psychological and, organism. You know. <laughs> My son has blue eyes. I, this shit is weird as fuck. That, like, what the hell? An organism doesn't exist as a, an isolated thing any more than a flower exists without a stalk, without roots, without earth. So in the same way, although we are not stalked on the ground, we are nevertheless inseparable from a huge social context. Well, to begin with, parents, siblings, people who work for us, and everything. I mean, it's, it's just impossible to cut ourselves off from a social environment and also, furthermore, from a natural environment. We are that. There's no clear way of drawing the boundary between this organism and everything that surrounds it. And yet, the image of ourselves my hair is getting caught on my finger now. does I not include happens. all those relationships. Our idea of personality of ourselves includes no information whatsoever about the hypothalamus, an organ of the brain, the pineal gland. 
really of the way we breathe and how our blood circulates of how we manage to form a sentence how we manage to be conscious how you open and close your hands the information contained in your image of yourself contains nothing about all that and therefore obviously it's an extremely inadequate image but nonetheless, we do think that the image of self refers to something. Because we, we have the impression, very strongly indeed, that I exist. And this isn't just an idea we think, my God, it's a feeling. It's, it's really substantially there in the middle of it. And what is it? I can't tell you yet. What, what, what do you actually sense? Like, you know, when you're sitting on the floor and you feel the floor is there and is real and hard. Okay, what are you sitting on the floor? What, are, what do you have the sensation of? You know, it's you here. When you're not hitting yourself. Huh. What is it? Well, in what part of your body do you feel yourself, the real I, existing? We can explore this very deeply, but I'm going to give you a preliminary and superficial answer. The, the sensation which corresponds to the image of ourselves is a chronic muscular tension. Which has absolutely no useful function whatsoever. It is when you try, say, to concentrate. What do you do when you try to pay attention? When I was a little boy in school, I had sitting next to me Another boy who had great difficulty in reading. And as he worked over the textbook with his perfect piffling information, he groaned and grunted and tried to read to get out the sound as if he were heaving. if you want to see something clearly, you must not make an effort. You must simply trust your eyes and your nervous system to do their thing. So you just look like that. I was writing the other night and I completely forgot somebody's name. But I knew that eventually my memory would produce it. And I just sat for a while and said to my memory, you know very well who this person is. Please give me the answer. And so, boing, there it was. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the way nerves work. They don't work by forcing them. And yet we've all been brought up to try to force our nervous activity, our concentration, 
our memory, our comprehension, and indeed our very love, we've tried to forfeit the muscles. Men will understand me if I say you cannot force by muscular effort yourself to have an erection. Women will understand me if I say you cannot force yourself with muscles to have an orgasm. It has to happen, and you must trust it to happen. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it by using your muscles. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So, in precisely the same way, well, let, let's complete the picture. So, therefore, the, the notion that we have of ourselves, of ego, is a compound of an image of ourselves which does not fit the facts and a sensation of muscular straining which is futile. So that what you conceive to be yourself is the marriage of an illusion and a futility. <laughs> so, well, what are we? That isn't the case. Well, obviously, uh, if you want to take a scientific point of view, by that mythology, then your, your organism, about which we know very little, and the organism, as we've seen, is inseparable from its environment, and so you are the organism environment. In other words, you are no less than the universe. Each one of you is the universe expressed in the place which you feel is here and now. You're an aperture through which the universe is looking at itself, exploring itself. And we're going to go into that much more deeply. So when you feel that you are a lonely put upon isolated little stranger confronting all this see you have an illusory feeling because the truth is the reverse you are the whole works that there is, that always was and always has been, always will be. Only, just as my whole body has a little nerve end here, which is exploring and which contributes to the sense of touch, you are just such a little nerve end for everything that's going on. Just as the eyes serve the whole body, and help it to find its way around, so you are, as it were, serving the whole universe. You're exploring. And it's exploring itself. So that you, as a function, you, you are a function of all that. And therefore, if this is so, it just doesn't fit the... the these facts do not fit the way we see it. Because we feel it the other way around. I am a little lonely thing exploring all this universe and trying to get make something out of it, get something out of it, do something with it. And I know I'm going to fail because I know I'm going to die one day. So we're all fundamentally depressed. And think up all these fantasies about what's going to happen to us when we're dead and all that kind of thing. Uh, what's going to happen to you when you're dead? If you are basically the universe, that question is irrelevant. You never were born and you never will die. Because what there is, is you. Got the papers. And that should be. Absolutely Got obvious. The tubes. But it is not obvious at all. That should be the simplest thing in the world. All in one fact. That you, the I, is what has always been going on and always will go on forever and ever. 
but we have been bamboozled by religion, by politicians, by fathers and mothers, by all sorts of people who tell us, you're not it. And we believe it. So, do you see now why, if I put it to you, in this very negative way. You can't do anything to change yourselves, to become better, to become happier, to become more serene, to become mystics or anything. If I say you can't do a damn thing, can you understand this negative statement in a positive way? What I'm really saying is that you don't need to. Man, the finger movements are so intricate. Yourself. You can't hardly see what the hell I be doing, yo. You are all as much. I'm actually tightening every individual nature. strand of hair, yo. As say trees, clouds, the patterns in running water, the shape of fire, the yeah, what's of up? the stars, the form of the galaxy. You are all just like that. nothing wrong with you at all. Except that I have to add this little flip. You, you, you have in you, you do think there's something wrong with you. See? And there's no question, you do. We all object to ourselves in various ways. And I'm going to add, there's nothing wrong with that either. Because that's part of the flow. That's part of what is going on. That's part of what we do. So I don't, you see, I'm, 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 what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to deliver you from a sense of guilt. Because I'm going to teach you that you needn't feel guilty because you feel guilty. <laughs> Alan Watts. <laughs> of course you feel guilty. It's like someone put a match on you and you feel hot. So they taught you as a child to feel guilty, and you feel guilty. They say, well, guys, somebody comes along and says, well, you shouldn't. It's not the point. I'm going to say, not that you shouldn't, but that you do, and don't worry about it. <laughs> and if you want to say further, but I can't help worrying about it, I'm going to say to you, okay, worry about it. <laughs> this is the principle called in Japanese judo meaning the gentle way. Go along with it. Go along with it. Go along with it. They had to fix that. So therefore, that was this about is the to, beginning of meditation. It was meditation. about to pop, like right there. You don't know what you're supposed to do. What can you do? Yo, nonstop. Well, you don't know what you're supposed to do. You watch. I'm trying to get my motherfucking dress twisted. You simply watch what's going on. Ah, like, I'm only like hey, halfway done. Yeah. This shit is. <sighs> this is why I have to get up so early to do this shit. Oh my and god. You understand the point. I got all of this to go. The point cannot be explained in words. I got like 80 something work. dreads, I think. <laughs> That's why I but try to twist some of them together. To any music, we need to get these shits down to like 60. The point of. It's too many. And that point will be the music itself. So any black I swear, I've got too many dreads. Oh, yeah. You I'm going to make them thin. All experiences that way all I can just braid them and style them. Uh, nah. they, you are these vibrations. If you could really feel out what is happening, what you are aware of, as you and as everything else, is all the same. It's the ones a, on the edges a, normally a, 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 need a, a, more attention than the ones in the middle, anyway. Sight vibrations, emotion vibrations. Uh, Alan Watts, W A T T S. Now, this is just one of his regular lectures. A lot of the time, I listen to those.
how he strayed from religion because religion is bullshit and that's the whole thing he's trying to get you to understand is like I don't know because I figured it out myself a long time ago so as a young child right I was in foster care like five years old I was already in foster care and my foster parents were Jehovah's Witnesses so that was pretty much my basic introduction into religion was being a Jehovah Witness and going to the Kingdom Hall and you know learning their beliefs with you know no holidays and all that other shit and so okay and so I, I did that for a couple of years right because I was forced to hey I didn't have a choice my foster parents were of that belief and that's what they were teaching me and so a couple of years of that my my grandmother my blood relative actually adopted me and my sister and took custody of us because nobody else in the family knew we were in foster care but when they found out my grandmother was like yo fuck that give me my damn grandkids and so she started to raise us and she was a christian you know and so we're going to uh you know a baptist church and all this stuff and and now i'm learning this type of religion and this belief system and that was you know from about i was about seven or eight years old and so by the time i'm eight i'm all, i've already been through two different types of religions and when i get into middle school i meet these well, no, because we actually actually went to elementary together, too. Later in elementary, I met this group of brothers. And all of them, it was five brothers, yo. And all of them had these really cool names, like these cool sounding names that I didn't hear. You, you didn't hear all the time, like Shaquan, Oyama, Tabu, Raheem. Shaquille and all all of them had the same middle name. Their middle name was Ali. And I'm like, I just one day I just asked one of them who was in my class, Shaquan, I was like, why y'all got the same middle name? He's like, oh, because cause we're Muslim. And so he started to, I'm like, so what the fuck does all these different religions, like, why are there so many? None of these people are bad people. Everybody I know are like cool ass people. But you, you're a Muslim and you're a Christian and you're a fucking Jehovah Witness. And and I was like, at a young young age, I just didn't understand it and I didn't want to have any participation with it. Like I said, my grandmother was a devout Christian. She started her own church, and as a young child, I hated fucking church. Always did. Never wanted to go. And so after a while, like, I would just have to stay for Sundays, uh, yeah, for Sunday school. And after Sunday school, I could leave. But it's, I never, 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 never wanted to go to church. And I questioned my grandmother about the Bible when I was, like, 13. I was already, like, like some serious shit. Like, why do you believe this shit? Like, tell me. Give me a straight answer. How is this real? And her answer was, you need to go pray because you got demons in you. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I love my grandmother, yo. God bless her soul, you know? But that was the only thing she could say is, you need to go pray. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's not a, that's not a legit answer. <laughs> That is not a legit answer. And ever since, ever since 13, that when I was really on it, like trying to figure out like what this whole shit is about. Who am I? What is this? Why do people believe in this God shit so much? And I went to a, a black church 
and they hallelujah, praise the Lord, tambourine shaking and shouting and the Holy Ghost and jumping and dancing. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? It's like some fucking possession type shit. To me, that's how I used to look at that shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's weird as shit. So <clears throat> I already was formulating most of these concepts myself at a young age that Alan Watt uh, presents to us as um as Eastern, you know, Buddhism and Hinduism and other kind of cultures like that 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 believe the same thing that Christians and Protestants and Catholics believe, but once again a slightly different version. And most most of these fundamental religions say that you know we're humans with a spirit and free will and that's God and God dictates to us how we should live our lives and and that doesn't feel right to me and Alan White says that I'm God you're God we're all God everything that there is makes up the infinite consciousness and that seems more real to me i feel like i feel that shit in a in a better sense yo i'm not saying that there is no higher power the way that religious texts give it to us is not is not the way it is yo religion personifies god so intensely that he's a man you know some uh some supreme man sitting on a throne in a kingdom but that's a visualization of the human mind and the human thought process to try to describe this you know this entity and we've been doing this for centuries, but the further you go back, the more you'll you'll see that the older religions, not even they weren't even religions, but the older spiritual systems actually understood the same thing that Alan Watt is putting forth is that we are all a part of this infinite consciousness. When I say I and I feel myself it's this exact same feeling that you have when you say i that is there is no difference in your eye in my eye we are the same it's the exact same consciousness you have a different perspective your consciousness is inside of a vessel my consciousness is inside of a vessel it limits us dramatically but we have a different perspective, but we are the exact same thing. The exact same thing. And we are all a part of a, a larger awareness, an infinite awareness. You know, we are infinite consciousness experiencing life as what we have come to call humans. You know, this shit is your body, your physical form is not your true self. It's not who you are. And so religion is a system of beliefs and control that has been grossly grossly manipulated, um, corrupted, and sanitized in many areas over centuries, you know, for different, for many, many different reasons. And so as soon as you associate yourself with any religion, it means you disassociate yourself with other religions, which means you have already created a division. You've already placed yourself in a box, in a category, and separated yourself from 
large, a, a larger part of understanding. And I feel like now in a, in a digital age of information, people can do way more research instead of just reading the Quran or reading of the King James Version. <laughs> you know, it's like, we can read history now on how these religions actually came into existence, how these texts actually came about, and why have they persisted for so long. You know, and yeah, and all these major religions around the world, and once again, there's still all these fucking wars and genocides and holocaust currently going on. And no, in religion, and God ain't stopping none of that shit, right? It's not until we all understand that once again, we are all made up of the same stuff. Ow, ow, that one kind of hurt a little bit. Ah. But yeah, man, it's 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 simply complex. You know what I'm saying? Uh, touch vibrations, sound vibrations, all these things adding together <laughs> Trump are woven. Yeah, Trump is a puppet. He's a figurehead. He's a pawn. He has no real power. Uh, these wars are already planned out. Anything that happens during Trump's campaign, or I mean during Trump's presidency in office, was already planned out before Obama was in office. And everything that happened during Obama's term was already planned out probably before Bush was in office or even before uh, uh, Clinton was in office. You know what I'm saying? These, these motherfuckers work in 25-year agendas and strategies. 25 years. A president, said, if he gets both terms, he's in there for eight fucking years. His whole term is already planned out. What war, what treaty, what embargo, what this and what that, what bill is going to be signed and passed and all that. It's already fucking planned out for him and the next president. It's already planned out. So, Bush, uh, Trump start wars? Mm, not really. Yeah, but uh, once again, man, this is like the brothers did in the motherfucking uh, Olympics, you know what I'm saying? And they, everybody, a black man is always going to get shot down for any kind of protest in this country. And so it, it don't it don't matter. He's just, it's weird. It's, see, Trump is the candidate for this younger generation and that's what you don't realize like adults are already solidified in their train of thought in their world view and perception and so nowadays everything is geared towards the next generation that who are going to be future voters so the things that you know we're seeing now uh kids who are anywhere from 15 to 20 years old are absorbing all of this and they they are a part of the reality television generation you know and the the twitter generation and so now this president is directed towards this younger generation to show them like anybody can be the president and if you are you can get on the national television and call good people son of a bitches, you know, <laughs> it just, it's, it's really fucking weird, so they're changing the president, and they're setting different standards, and, um, they're making it more of a reality show type, uh, scenario to get these younger kids to, to watch, and, uh, and they, now they have this really skewed, uh, fucked up view on politics and how, the uh, commander in chief 
shit at because, well, you know, we had a black president. He was cool. He played basketball and stuff like that. Yeah, but he also signed the Patriot Act Part 2 and he signed PDDF 51. Uh, he never shot. He never shut down Guantanamo Bay. Don't forget Fast and the Furious. Benghazi never pulled the troops out of Iraq. So, yeah, a lot of shit went on during that cool black president's can't, uh, presidency and you now. All this shit that Trump is doing, like uh, having Twitter fights with some basketball players and shit, while real shit is being done to solidify the powers of the military industrial complex and the central banks, and so they can continue their population reduction agenda, and they keep us entertained with fucking bullshit ass media to the point where it has seeped into our most highly respected levels of uh, political offices. And now everybody in government seems like a fucking moron. And these young kids are just thinking it's normal for the president to act like that. It's a, it's a whole weird-ass agenda they have. Really, really weird agenda they have set up, yo. It's all good, yo. I just I just blocked that dude. I don't be playing that shit no more for a while. Like I can I can get some trolls and I'll try to help educate them. You know what I'm saying? And I'll try to walk them through the processes of why they think the way they think and why they actually would even post something on a, a platform like this is because of their insecurities, knowing that they can't say what he posted in real life because if he walked up to any random black person and said yeah you know what black people are evil he would be really scared of what the consequences may be so they come in they come on platforms like this where they know that no one can well without trying hard enough no one can trace them down and you know slap them in the mouth for saying some dumb shit but yeah i i could have you know actually told him that but then he would detect some more stuff. I'm not in the mood for it this morning. I'm just trying to twist my hair. So, I blocked that bitch. <laughs> uh, I blocked that bitch. I don't look like Snoop Dogg. No, I really don't. Trust me, I don't look like Snoop. If I get a picture of Snoop and put that shit side by side, you'd be like, oh yeah. You don't look like Snoop, but it's it's okay because you know <laughs> that's that thing where all black people look alike, I guess. Because everybody says, "Oh, you look like D Rose," and I don't even watch sports, so I was like, "Who the fuck D Rose is?" He's like a basketball player, so I had to look him up, and I look at D Rose, and I was like, "You know what? I don't look like that motherfucker, yo." And then I look at a picture of Snoop Dogg. And I look like a picture of D. Rose and put them side by side and them motherfuckers don't look nothing alike. But somehow I look like D. Rose and Snoop Dogg. And then one time somebody said, you look like Tyrese. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I look like Snoop Dogg, D. Rose, and Tyrese. And you get these pictures and none of these motherfuckers don't look nothing alike at all. I don't look like Snoop Dogg, bro. Nope. Okay, bro. If I, it's good. This, this all good. Yeah. Look, you look like the man beside the man, beside the man, beside the man, beside the man, beside the, man, beside the goddamn man who 
who called my piccolo player a motherfucker. That's who you look like. Motherfucker, you look like Snoop, D Rose, Tyrese. You look like Lawrence Fishburne, Forrest Whitaker. You look like Tyler Perry, Chris Rock. You look like Lil Wayne, T Pain. I look like I look like any motherfucker with dreads. You look like that one guy, that wrestler, what's his name? The guy with the dread Booker T. Yeah, you look like Booker T. No, I don't look like every motherfucker with long hair. Oh shit. I work with this dude. He's in the maintenance department. This motherfucker looks like a young Santa Claus. I had to tell him that too, yo. Dead to his face. I'm like, yo, you know you look like a young Santa Claus, right? This motherfucker got this little round, red, pudgy face. And he's a ginger white boy. So he got this fluffy ass, like ginger hair and this big ass ginger beard. And he's all like chubby and shit. I'm like, bro, when you get old and your hair turns gray, you're going to look like fucking Santa. You look like Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, you know he's getting a lot of attention these days. He's doing really good things in the community. (laughs) Frederick Douglass is getting a lot of attention these days. like Kanye. <laughs> you look like Omar Epps when he played in 8 Mile. <laughs> oh, that was 8 Mile. That was Omar Epps. That was, uh, ah, uh, oh, damn, I can't think of my man's name right now. <laughs> Bro, this like, listen. <laughs> Oh, man. You look like Mike Tyson and Denzel Washington. (laughs) Oh, damn. Oh, damn. You motherfucker look like Aaron Blaney. Yeah, Makai Pfeiffer. Yeah. Yeah, you look like you look like Makai Pfeiffer in Eight Mile. Fuck out of here, man. You look like everybody. <laughs> you look like you look like two guys from the Migos. <laughs> Damn, I look like both of them. You know what I'm saying? I look like you look like Slim Thug. Man, Slim Thug, a tall, light skinned dude, man. I'm short and brown. I'm just saying, like. <laughs> I'm telling you. You look like all seven Migos. <laughs> you look like all seven of them. Wear it up, man. You just got that look about you. You just look familiar. You look like I done, I done seen you some way. You look like Shaquille O'Neal a little bit. Shaq. I really... Shaq. Come on, man. You look like Busta Rhymes. <laughs> you look like Busta Rhymes before he cut his hair. Y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Oh, my God. Yo, 
You know what I'm gonna do, yo? I'm gonna sell a VR headset for um for three hundred bucks. Who want that shit, yo? Word up. I get tired of looking at these motherfuckers. The VR headset. Another VR headset. Who want one of these damn things? Do they just sit around? Nobody nobody don't play these fucking VR sets. Three hundred dollars. I'm gonna put that shit on Facebook Market. Cause uh I don't even think I'm gonna buy another game for that shit, yo. Waste of fucking money. Well, not a waste of fucking money. <laughs> you look like a black Tom Cruise. You, you remember, uh, you remember Tropical Thunder? When, um, when, uh, Robert Downey Jr., when he played the the black guy, you look like that black character. <laughs> Hold up, if I said the right name, that was Robert Downey Jr. That was, oh damn, I can't think of the dude's name. <laughs> you like Stephen Walker, take this ring. Damn. You look like the dude playing the dude playing the dude. I don't I don't get out of character until I do the, the uh what do you say? Until I do the interviews after the movie. <laughs> oh my god. I know who I am. That's disguised as another dude. Damn right. That's who I look like. You remember? You seen you seen the first predator? The one the one black guy in that movie? You look like that guy. You look like you look like a black Alex Trebek. You look like the black Bob Ross. Oh my god, yo, no lie, yo, my arms are fucking tired, my shoulders, uh, uh, but I'm getting that fucking workout just twisting my hair, yo, my shoulders are on fire right now, that shit, this should be like some kind of exercise, like, I don't know, I can come up with some shit out of that, yo, alright, everybody, let's twist these dreads, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, pull, pull, Now, now I want to watch Tropical Thunder. It's fake blood. It's fake. It's fake warm blood tasting. <laughs> it's like what? It tastes like blood. Oh, uh, that movie was funny as shit. Yo. G5, baby. G5. You want to fly G5? <laughs> You just saw a face in the mirror behind me? That's creepy. That's kind of strange. Now, you got me looking at the mirror. I better smoke something. Maybe if I, maybe if I get high, I'll see the same shit you seen. Cause God damn, you on some good shit this morning, boy. Too early in the morning for that shit. This motherfucker's, what time is it? Man, it ain't even six o'clock. This motherfucker seeing faces in the mirror. <laughs> ain't you gotta go to work? Don't go to work. Tell the motherfuckers you seen that shit, bro. They ain't see. They gonna see you right. Look, man, you just go home for the day. You go. You go ahead and clock out. You go. You go. You go ahead and clock out. You don't feel good. Don't. You know it's too early. Don't be seeing faces before six o'clock. That's what I see. That. It's like. Yo, trap. 
I think I see the face of that mirror behind you, son. Word. Like, no. If you high, you need to go back to sleep. You need to take your ass back to bed. You doze off a little bit. You, you, it was a dream or something. You seeing shit in the mirrors. You look crazy. Nah, cause like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a face in the, yo, it's a face in the mirror, son. Give me that goddamn weed. Take your ass to sleep. I think I'm gonna face in the goddamn mirror. What wrong with this guy? Got me peeking at mirrors and shit. Making me feel odd. Yeah. Uh, mofos. Oh my god. I still got like 20 of these bitches to go back here. Like, what the fuck, man? But that shit make it look so nice. Well, I'm actually going pretty fast, y'all. I've only been doing this shit for an hour, yo. Normally it take me like three hours. I'll be in here for like another 40 minutes for this shit is done, though. Fucking shit, that's tight. Holy hell. That's what make them look good, though, man. You gotta pull them shits tight, like. So you know that shit strong, man. I could probably motherfucking. You know what I'm saying? If I get in a real tight situation and I need like a zip line or like a motherfucking. Uh, a, uh, a rope to, to get out of a window or something. I can just cut my dreads off, right? Tie them shits, and tie them shits together in the end. Might use that shit for a lasso. You know what I'm saying? I, like I said, I, I, I could climb a tree with that shit. Just in case, man. See, this is a strategy, man. This shit gonna come in handy one day. You know what I'm saying? You never know, man. I might be on motherfucking naked and afraid. And gotta catch a fish or something. I'll take a couple of these dreads, weave that shit into a net, or a little basket or something. Boom, I'll be out there catching big ass salmon and shit. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> Need to tie, make a hammock or some shit. You know what I'm saying? My shit gonna come in handy. I, you know, in the wintertime, that shit be cold. I just tie it around. You know, so I be having a scarf. Hit this right here, tie that shit a knot, like a natural scarf, you know what I'm saying, that shit just, it's versatile, it's a strategy, man, strategies, you just don't, just don't do shit just to be doing shit, you know, you feel me, some people do shit just to do shit. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no belt. And you, you know what I'm saying? You gotta keep your pants up. Just take one of these dresses, pop, pop that bitch off. Make a belt. Anything you need. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he think there was a Jesus. <laughs> oh, Chris. Chris, you're so funny, Chris. You think there was a Jesus. <laughs> oh, that is that is hilarious. That's like <laughs> that's like kids still believing in Santa Claus and the Easter bunny. He's like in Jesus, Jesus had dreads. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. It was, <laughs> I had this one this one photo meme, that shit was funny as shit, like how different people view Jesus, and it was different pictures of Jesus, like in the square box, so it was like, how Christians view Jesus, and it's him on a cross and all that shit, <laughs> and then it was like, how uh, historians view Jesus, and it looks like some old Arab guy in the desert, and how Mormons view Jesus, and it's like some white clean cut guy in a suit. And it's like how black people view Jesus. And it's like a black Jesus with dreads. 
how Jesus views himself. And it's like a lamb, like a real sheep. <laughs> and then the last box was like how Jesus really looks. And it's just a black box with nothing there because he never existed. <laughs> I was like, that was funny. Uh, mm, <laughs> E forty never lies. Uh, no, because there have been historians long before the time of Christ. People kept track of history. We know this because we have one book, one book only. It talks about Jesus. It's 2,000 years old. But people were tracking history before Jesus. A long time before Jesus, people were tracking history. Uh, and the Bible is the only place that we hear of this son of God who came from heaven, who died and resurrected. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, and they say, uh, if Jesus is in the Quran, <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna we're, so we're gonna take all these religious texts literally, right? We're gonna literally believe the Bible, right? That uh, a man stayed alive inside of a fish for seven days. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, we, okay, so what, so we live in one physical world, uh, one realm, one, dim, this, everybody lives in the same dimension, right? Where we have certain laws of nature, uh, certain laws that, you know, can't really be changed or altered. So if we go by the Bible, right? And saying that none of the laws of nature have changed since the Bible times because the Bible was written by men like us, right? By human beings, right? Right? And all of the laws of nature are the same, right? Okay? So, why did all these miracles and stuff stop? Why can't people walk on water now or split the Red Sea or live to be fucking 999 years old and all this only in 2000 years like the laws of nature have changed that much in 2000 years where this shit can no longer happen why did the bible stop why did it just stop like if god is a living god wouldn't there still be prophets wouldn't we still be on on this quest to fulfillment this road to reaching uh revelations what happened to all this? Like, the Bible just abruptly came to an end. Like, that's all you need, right? You know, two th in, a, in, a, in a society, in a culture, 2,000 years ago, so we, so we were supposed to just stay in that same mentality, stay in that same technological age, stay in that same period 2,000 years ago without changing our culture, our society, our language, or anything, right? And, and, and having this book grow with everything, you know, we were, oh, okay, it's so weird, you know, uh, not, not normal people, right, so, <clears throat> once again, you know, so there was only this one being ever that was able to be born a virgin birth, right, Joe Osteen exists.
must be upstairs or somewhere. But I have the encyclopedia of the gods. I mean, it's <laughs> there's so many deities that had the Jesus story thousands of years before Jesus. So why do we just pick why do we just choose the Jesus story and stick with that story and say this is the one true Messiah. This is the one time this has ever happened. You know, this is the true son of God and this is the true religion that we should follow. When there the same story was told several times before the period of Jesus, you know, before that era even happened, yo, it's fucking ridiculous. Oh, don't turn off PlayStation. Why are you acting like that? Whoa, Aaron, you got it all backwards, dude. So if you're talking about I want worms and shit to eat me. Provide for my provider. Hmm. And this is this is the, the weird thing right here. So if you think you are your body then your religion has you fucked up because if you're saying you want worms to eat me worms can't eat me you know what I'm saying worms could probably eat you if you think you're your body but that's crazy you know <clears throat> There's a lot of Jesuses out there are a lot of other gods or deities with the Jesus story. Uh, I don't know why people think Jesus is so fucking special or something.
Where is that one? I had a whole list of these in here, but if you you can go through this fucking. neutrons not souls so then how are you thinking right now how are how are you <clears throat> yo believe it or not this book was written by michael jordan <laughs> yo uh so how are you thinking where are your thoughts coming from why why are you sitting here uh sending these messages to me so that's that's just some some random chemical event that's going on because your neutrons are uh, compiled together in a certain way that makes certain amino acids and that gives off certain reactions and and this you know this biological system called your body which causes you know chemicals to be produced in your brain which uh, makes your nerves do certain things, which move your muscles, which made you pick up your controller, which made you text me a message that said, we have neutrons, not souls. <laughs> so, okay, so this is all just some random shit, right? That just comes from having neutrons, electrons, and protons, right? You know, just atoms and molecules and, and chemical reactions, right? That's all it is to it, right? Okay, right, that makes science. Science. <sighs> you know what science is? Is a European creation. You know why they call the the uh, metaphysics of e Egypt are commit the mystery schools when you study ancient Egypt and the mystery schools because it wasn't the same science that they were accustomed to of measuring and weighing something if you can't measure and weigh something then it's not real that's not true it's so very untrue but when when they couldn't explain it, they said, oh, it's a mystery school. What are they doing? It's like magic. You know, there's always been a better understanding from, from other people uh, as to what <clears throat> the true nature of this world and the true nature of what consciousness and life is. And some people figure that if they can't uh, do an experiment on it and weigh it and measure it and measure it so it doesn't it doesn't fit their science and so it's and not reals and then you know what it turns you buggy doesn't it <laughs> oh man it turns you buggy doesn't it <clears throat> but science can can explain almost everything else right oh right <clears throat> yeah, this is the Matrix. No? You never watch too much of anything. You gotta watch more. That's the problem. Just don't watch one thing. Don't listen to one set of people giving you one set of ideas. Okay, I've heard this part before. I've heard about science. And chemical reactions and the Big Bang Theory and evolution of species and, you know, survival of the fittest and, and Darwinism and all of this shit. And now we have, uh, you know, uh, genus, species, phylum, order, class, all this shit. And it's good because we, we have a 
scientific construct to base the the material world on. It's awesome. I got that down pat. They've been teaching me biology since school. I learned chemistry early on. Let's uh, switch the page. Matter of fact, let's change the chapter. Matter of fact, let's change the book. Study something else. Research something else. So how does this spiritual system fit into my material science? Hmm. So you got to have energy in science, right? One of the fundamentals. Where does energy come from? Can you create energy? Oh, all the energy was created in the Big Bang, right? So, okay, so uh, when was the Big Bang? Oh, okay, it happened so many billion years. So now you're already playing around with time, right? And where did it happen? In space? Okay, so we have space time, right? So now, where did this energy come from? So you got space, time, energy, fart. What up, bro? Why are you up so early, man? So is it is it creation? Is it evolution? Is it intelligent design? You know, what is this whole thing? Because science ain't going to be able to explain everything for you. Because you are energy. Science has explained that much. Science has also stated that energy cannot be <clears throat> uh, created or destroyed. It can only be altered, changed, or, or uh, moved, right? So if you are energy and energy can't be destroyed, hmm, we always get stuck in this little conundrum. Oh, fart sucks. You're so sweet. I'm trying to get this this wig done, man. Got to have my dress looking tight, bro. But I'm, you know, I'm too cheap to go to a salon, so I got to do it myself. So I figured, while I'm up twisting my hair, getting all beautified and whatnot. I chill out with some of my homies. Let's have some good conversations, you know. For some reason, <clears throat> a lot of my conversations always turns to some religious talk, which is good, you know, because a lot of people want to know. A lot of people are trying to figure out. Exactly. Now they got these little pods. Now it was, well, that is cremation, but it's weird. But you can, like, take your biomatter and put it in, like, a little thing, and it, and it will actually grow a fucking tree. They put, like, a cedar tree or something in there and plant you somewhere, and you turn into a fucking tree. Uh... So what are you saying? You just like cremate cremate all the dead bodies in like a factory or something and they use the the BDUs as uh like some kind of thermal some kind of thermal energy or something. That makes a lot of I mean, logically that makes sense. Ethically, morally, uh a lot of people probably push against it. Uh, me? I've never actually thought about it like that before, but would I be totally against it? Nah, not really. Wow. I'll put it in the dirt. That's where bodies go anyway. Oh, so you made me think of this whole other concept. Yo, what if we had a plant that burnt dead bodies, yo? And use that shit for energy. A lot of dead people, man. Somebody make a killing off of that shit. Damn, that's crazy. They'll make a killing off of dead bodies. Farting the pun. Am I getting too dark right now? That was some crazy ass thoughts. Whoa. 
anyway, yeah, bo dead bodies already going to dirt. You mean without a casket and everything like that and just, like, use them as fertilizer or some shit? Yeah. Yeah, but... <clears throat> I don't know. Different traditions with ceremonial burials are really big in almost every culture, and it's almost disgraceful and blasphemous to, you know, disrespect the body of a loved one that has passed. So, you know, taking a dead body and using it as a some type of consumer product would, like I say, on a moral and ethical level, I don't think it would ever, ever fly in many, many, many different cultures. Like, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't go uh, logically. <laughs> like I said, it's not a bad idea. I mean, they're just bodies that aren't being used. So, you, I mean, before they rot, you could be able to, you know, eat utilize whatever biomass or biomaterial but uh yeah how did we get on that that's crazy all right next subject somebody change the topic i'm almost done guys yo i'm gonna let me show you i'm almost done i think i got like maybe like six or seven more i hope <laughs> Please let there only be like six or seven more. My arms are so tired. My fingertips are starting to hurt, man. Like this is a this is a fucking job, yeah. Oh my goodness. A few more to go. Almost done. I'm about to turn something back on and listen to. Uh, yeah, my girlfriend should help me sometimes. But, I don't know. I like the way I do it. And plus she sleep right now. She has work in a little while. Did I lose connection to my Bluetooth? Dang it. I don't know. It's connected. It says it is. Labor Day is an important time to reflect on our country's past, present, and everyone's future. Hi, I'm Dean Hesser. When my father started Time Hesser dealerships in 1975. I'm about your father and his dealerships. As a result of having a false sense of identity, mm. we act in a way that is inappropriate to our natural environment. And when that inappropriate way of action is magnified by a very powerful technology, we swiftly begin to see the results of a profound discord between man and nature. As is well known, we are now in the process of destroying our environment. As a result of an attempt to conquer it and master it. Our environment is not something other than ourselves. In assuming that it is, we have made a great mistake. 
and are now paying the price for it. the strong sensation that our own being inside our skin is extremely different from the world outside our skin. That while there may be intelligence inside human skins, and while there may be values and loving feelings, outside the skin is a world of mechanical process which does not give a damn about any individual and which is basically unintelligent. It should be obvious that the human being goes with the rest of the universe. Even though we say in popular speech, I came into this world. Now, it is not true that you came into this world. You came out of it in the same way as a flower comes out of a plant or a fruit comes out of a tree. And as an apple tree apples, the solar system in which we live and therefore the galaxy in which we live and therefore the system of galaxies that system peoples and therefore people are an expression of its energy and of its nature if people are intelligent and I suppose we have to grant that if then the energy which people express must also be intelligent because one does not gather figs from thistles and grapes from thorns. But it does not occur, you see, to the ordinary civilized person to regard himself or herself as an expression of the whole universe. It should be obvious that we cannot exist except in an environment of earth, air, water, and solar temperature. That all these things go with us and are as important to us, albeit outside our skins, as our internal or organs, heart, stomach, brain, and so forth. You go with your environment in the same way as your head goes with the rest of your body. You do not find in nature faces arriving in the world sui generis. They go with a body. But also bodies do not arrive in a world uh, which would be, for example, a plain ball of scrubbed rock floating without an atmosphere far away from a star. That will not grow bodies. There is no soil for bodies. There is no complexity of environment yeah, what up? which is body producing. So bodies go with a very complicated natural environment. And if the head goes with the body and the body goes with the environment, the body is as much an integral part of the environment as the head is part of the body. It is deceptive, of course, because the human being is not rooted to the ground like a tree. A human being moves about and therefore can shift from one environment to another. But these shifts are superficial. The basic environment of the planet remains a constant.
this man don't make sense to you, that means you ain't got no common sense. Now, we are not really aware of this. Upon taking thought and due consideration, it does occur to us, yes, indeed, we do need that environment. But in the ordinary way, we don't feel it. That is to say, we don't have a vivid sensation of belonging to our environment in the same way that we have a vivid sensation of being an ego inside a bag of skin located mostly in the skull, about halfway between the ears and a little way behind the eyes. And it issues in these disastrous results of the ego, which, according to 19th century common sense, feels that it is a fluke in nature, and that if it does not fight nature, it will not be able to maintain its status as intelligent fluke. So the geneticists are now saying, and many others are now saying, that man must take the course of his evolution into his own hands. He can no longer trust the wiggly, random, and uh, unintelligible processes of nature to develop him any further, but he must interfere with his own intelligence and through genetic alterations breed the kind of people who will be viable for human society and that sort of thing. Now this I submit is a ghastly error because human intelligence has a very serious limitation. It is a scanning system of conscious attention which is linear. That is to say, it examines the world in lines rather as you would pass the beam of a flashlight across spotlight. That's why our education takes so long. It takes so long because we have to scan miles of lines of print. Now, the universe does not come at us in lines. It comes at us in a multidimensional continuum in which everything is happening all together everywhere at once. And it comes at us much too quickly to be translated into lines of print or of other information, however fast they may be scanned. That is our limitation. The computer will greatly speed up linear scanning, but it's still linear scanning. And so long as we are stuck with that form of wisdom, we cannot deal with more than a few variables.
But the practical problems of human life deal with variables in the hundreds of thousands. Here, st statistical methods are very poor. And thinking it out by linear consideration is impossible. With that equipment, then, we are proposing to interfere with our genes. And with that equipment also, be it said, we are trying to solve our political, economic, and social problems. And naturally, yeah, I everybody has last a night. sense of total frustration. Tresemme. Yo, Tresemme got some good products, yo. I use their, their uh, and their extra moisturizing shampoo and their and Tresemme conditioner. That shit is good, yo. Probably, uh, probably the best shampoo I've ever used, Tresemme. This right here, this is this is not shampoo, man. This is uh, just a moisturizing spray. Uh, the moisturizers help prevent breakage. Great for braids, locks, twists. Help soothe itchy and dry scalps. Nine greasy formula. Longer lasting locks. I spray it one time, let it soak in a little bit, spray it again, and then I'll, I'll take it down after that. I use the word thinking, I mean precisely that process. Translating what is going on in nature into words, mm. symbols, Hello. or numbers. Triple limb. But you cannot quench anybody's thirst with the word water, just as you cannot eat a dollar bill and derive nutrition. Almost done now. Been up for almost two hours, over two hours really. And I've been doing my hair for two hours. Everybody always see me in the studio painting. Try to let people peek in on like little other little parts of my life sometimes. I won't be doing much. But y'all see, I'm an early bird. I'm always up early. I'm always doing something. <laughs> I know too many people who sit around all day do nothing. But at the same time, it has proved too much. As soon as I get done with this and get up, I'll probably go to the gym for a little while. You've become so fast. Am I rolling up a cigarette? That we confuse the world as it is. You smoke cigarette? With the world tobacco. as it is thought about, talked about, and figured about. Rolling your own cigarettes is cheaper than buying packs of cigarettes. And the difference between these two is vast. 8.30 p.m. in Australia. Not aware of ourselves, I about to go to bed. A symbolic way, I ain't no use from Australia. We're not related to ourselves at all. We're like people eating menus instead of dinners. And that's why we all feel psychologically. So then we get back to the question of uh, what do we mean by I? Well, first of all, obviously, we mean our symbol of our 
Ourselves, in this case, is the whole psychophysical organism, conscious and unconscious, plus its environment. That's your real self. Your real self, in other words, is the universe as centered on your organism. That's you. What you do is also a doing of your environment. Your behavior is its behavior, as much as its behavior is your behavior. It's mutual. You could say it is transaction. You are not a puppet which your environment pushes around. Nor is the environment a puppet which you push around. They go together. They act together. In the same way, for example, if I have a wheel, one side of it, going down is the same as the other side of it going up. When you handle the steering wheel of a car, are you pulling it or are you pushing it? No, you're doing both, aren't you? When you pull it down this side, you're pushing it up that side. It's all one. So there's a push-pull between organism and environment. are only rarely aware of this as when in curious alterations of consciousness which we call mystical experience cosmic consciousness an individual gets the feeling that everything that is happening is his own doing or the opposite of that feeling that he isn't doing anything I'm listening to Alan Watts but that all his doings his decisions and so forth are happenings of nature you can describe it in these two completely opposite ways, but you're talking about the same experience. You're talking about experiencing your own activity and the activity of nature as one single process. And you can describe it as if you were omnipotent like God or as if it were completely deterministic and you hardly existed at all. But remember, both points of view are right. We'll see where that gets us. But we don't feel that, do we, ordinarily? What we feel instead is an identification of ourselves with our idea of ourselves. Or I would rather say, with our image of ourselves. And that's the first thing of an ego. You play a role. You identify with that role. I play a role. It's called Alan Watts. And I know very well that that's a big act. <clears throat> I can play. 
play some other roles besides Alan Watts if necessary. But I find that this one is better for making a living. <laughs> But I assure you, it's a mask, and I don't take it seriously. I don't know. The idea of my being a kind of messiah or guru or savior of the world just breaks me up. As <laughs> I know me. <laughs> so I don't know. It's very difficult to be holy. In the ordinary sense. So I know I'm not. But most of us are taught to think that we are whom we are called. And when you're a little child and you begin to learn a role and your parents and your peers approve of your being that, they know who you are. You're predictable. So you can be controlled. But when you act out of role and you imitate some other child's behavior, Everybody points the finger and says, you're not being true to yourself. Johnny, that's not you, that's Peter. <laughs> so you learn to stay Peter, or to stay Johnny. But of course, you're not either. Because this is just the image of you. It's as much of you as you can get into your conscious attention, which is precious little. Your image of yourself contains no information about how you structure your nervous system. It contains no information about your blood chemistry. It contains almost no information about the subtle influences of society upon your behavior. It does not include the basic assumptions of your culture, which are all taken for granted and understood. Oh, shit! Got a goddamn shade that shit. Boop, boop, boop. It includes My baby all hairs. Kinds of that you're unaware of, as for example, the time is real. That there is such a thing as a past. Which is true. But nevertheless, all these things are, are unconscious in us, and they are not included in our image of ourselves. Nor, of course, included in our image of ourselves. Is there any information? About our inseparable relationships with the whole natural universe. So, uh, this is a very impoverished image. When you ask a person, what did you do yesterday? They'll give you a historical account of a certain number of events in which they participated, and a certain number of things which they saw, used, or were clobbered by. But realize at once that this history leaves out most of what happened. I, in trying to describe what happened to me this evening, will never be able to describe it. Because there are so many people here that if I were to talk about everyone whom I've seen, what they were wearing, what color their hair was, what sort of expressions they had on their faces, I would have to talk to Doomsday. So, Instead of this rich physical experience. Alright, this is what I've been meaning to do for a while. I'll probably do some more of this later on, but I'll actually play some of the things that I post on my Facebook page. So this is my own personal Facebook page. scroll down and go way back go back go back go back go back go back farther than that go back damn I gotta go this far back get Jim Carrey on that subject this is my own personal Facebook page now. Choices to play a character, but there was no me actually at the end of it all. I realized that there was, you know, that this character was uh, making choices to play a character, that there was actually a existential, not a crisis, but a discovery going on. You know? That is Jim Carrey. Jim f***ing 
Kerry, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see all these headlines. Jim Carrey goes insane. Jim Carrey freaks out. No, ladies and gentlemen, he is not trolling. He is not gone crazy. No, Jim word. Jim is, Yo. as the cool kids whoa, whoa, say, whoa, whoa. Pause. Pause woke. He is saying what Jim... Yo. You have no just pass, yo. You lying. You lying, yo. I just I just read a Hugh Hefner quote earlier this morning, yo. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I forgot what the quote said. It was it was something about sex. It was like, yo, sex sex is the driving force of the world. Just everybody admit it and 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 embrace it, not fight against it. Hugh Hefner. I was like, yo. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It, it is the driving force of the world, yo. It's, yo, procreation. Yo, the OG pimp. Damn. Man, Hef was that dude, though. You know what I'm saying? Yo, who, who live in a motherfucking a silk bathroom, a silk bathroom robe? With a stogie in his mouth, just surrounded by bitches his whole life, yo. How old was he? How, how old was Hefner, yo? Damn. Motherfucker. Playboy. Ain't he got a a daughter? He got he got daughters or sons. In his sleep at 91. Oh my god, that's the perfect way to go out, yo. Damn, that's the perfect way to go out, bro. You know he ain't in the bed by himself. He probably seen some some nice little boobs the night before. Probably got a little young thing on his little man like a pacifier. Like she's just sucking on pacifier, just go to sleep. 91 years old, just like, all right, it's last time, just, just going and sleep at 91, that's the, that's perfect, that's fucking perfect, I done seen my kids, my grandkids, probably had some great grands, I live a good ass life, ate good all the time, You know what I'm saying? Drink good all the time. Smoke good all the time. The scene, the most finest, most beautiful with these women in the world. I've lived 91 years chilling. <laughs> I've been chilling for for 80 of these years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sit back, relax. I ain't going out in no pain, in no hospital bed, hooked up to no IVs and some respirator, none of that shit. And I died in my own house, in my own bed, in my sleep. <laughs> Damn, that's how I want to do it. I want to I wanna die old in my sleep. Yo, just go to, the, go to bed one night and just give up the ghost. God damn the, the hell. The gurus have said for thousands of years, we have just been too caught up in our churches, in our religions, in our material world to see this truth. A truth that is available to anybody who has the courage to stop and look. See, we have accepted the collective view of reality. But what if the collective view of reality is wrong? And what if Jim Carrey is right. We say that the sun rises, but the sun doesn't rise. The earth rotates in a way that the sun appears to come up. We say that the ocean is blue, but if I told you to go out to the ocean and bring me back a bucket of blue water, you could never do it. You could never do it because the water is clear, even though it appears to be blue. So what if we only appear to exist, but really don't? Let's find out. But Jim, you got really dressed up for the occasion. You look good. No, I Is that didn't an get accident? dressed up. I didn't get dressed Who up. Who did? There is no me. There's no you. No. He is saying that the me, who we take ourselves to be, the ego, the story, is just a story. It's not real. Do you believe in icons? I, I believe, believe in icons. 
believe in personalities. I don't believe that you exist, but there is a, a wonderful fragrance in the air. Personality, person, coming from the Greek word persona, meaning mask, is fake. And the ancients knew this. Is I that didn't an get accident? Dressed up. I didn't get dressed Who up. Who did? There is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream. It's just things happening. Hey, you at home watching this, are you breathing right now? Is that true? Or is breathing happening? You are seeing right now. <laughs> Carry on that, is LSD. That true? Or is seeing happening? You may or may not be thinking right now. Is that true? Or is thinking happening? If you are the one thinking, then tell me what is your next thought going to be? Pause this video right now and try it. Try it. Can you choose not to have thoughts arise? You can, because thinking happens spontaneously. You are not the thinker. Thoughts happen. It is just happening, as Jim Carrey said. See, the ego or the I thought likes to take credit. The I thought is like that kid in class who we worked on group projects with. They didn't do anything except put their name on the paper and take credit. So likewise, the you, the I thought, doesn't really need to be there for functioning to happen. Are you the one that goes to sleep or does sleep happen? Go ahead, try to go to sleep. It is only when you let go of trying to go to sleep can you go to sleep. Are you the one who wakes yourself up or does waking up happen? Okay, so the shortest path to knowing who you are is knowing what you are not. So my first question is, can you be the subject and the object at the same time? Kind of a stupid question, right? The answer is no. What you perceive, you cannot be. Because see, there is the perceiver and then there is the perceived. The subject and the object. For example, I perceive this phone. I cannot be this phone. I perceive this body. I am not this body. I have a car. I drive that car. But I am not that car. I never confuse myself to be the car. Well, I have a body. I drive this body. So I am not this body. Why do I confuse myself to be my body? It's my body. My body. Me and then there's body. Make sense? I perceive the voice in my head, so I cannot be the voice in my head. The voice... Yeah, but Jim Carrey, motherfuckers is waking up to a lot of different truth. So. Let's see what else is on my, my personal Facebook thing. All right, here's another video clip I posted. With guns and they Diodorus Catch a body just a product of the diaspora yeah. Too blind to see the horror Too numb to feel the aura I need a love like Stephen Laura Robin Rita Hold up okay. Violated and they might kill you for it You don't want that kind of smoke I feel like Philip Morris okay. My spirit is torn I hear it and still ignore it I'm popping orange pills in the hills with Lauren Warning I don't need to get my palm red To know I'm about to smack rappers until my palm red Baguettes in my Rolex Homie that's long bread I think yeah. they got me on the wrong meds That's when we all said yeah. We were dying just to make a living Until we came back and made a killing But that's all connected Hero villain, it's all perspective Trigger happy police killers, they so selective When your skin the origin begins to be a death wish And they get out by morning and time to eat their breakfast Locked up, you call collect, come home, you call collections Ironically, this shit is called corrections I stand corrected, it's all deception like your false elections Feeling lost like I miss directions Must be the misdirection See, I can send us in a text, you wouldn't get the message You probably wouldn't see Said shit until I interjected. Okay. I'm popping X's to forget my X's. Yeah, yeah. Mo Molly for the melancholy. Let's go. Cold beans at the same time like edamame. Okay. I'm never sorry. I'm writing my forever story. My pops never call me. The last time that we spoke, he said, tell the federales they will never find me. I used to dream of make backs and never roll shoddy. These memories send chills through my whole body. Parents bugging, beefing with my evil cousins. Left home without a piece of luggage. I had visions of the reaper coming. These are the reaper cousins. No sheets or covers, it ain't like I leave asleep or nothing Tweaking, coming down, having deep discussions She got so high and started speaking Russian I'm peaking, fussing, let me waste another week for nothing Fuck 12 like a baker's dozen Bitch, I'ma make you love it yeah. wow. See, dude, from Canada Oh, 
right there, there's the Alan Watt chill step, and then there's my video, of course. Um, there's a uh, Joey Badass video I posted. Remember like having any black male teachers at all? No, actually I don't think so. I don't think I've ever had a black male teacher. No. I don't really have too many black uh, male teachers. Substitutes. Less than two percent of our public schools yeah, have black male have teachers. Crazy, cause I, I've 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 had a, a few black male teachers, but not a lot. And it's weird, like. <clears throat> and that's the thing. If you don't see someone who looks like you doing something, then you won't feel like you can do the same thing, yo. personal videos more Joey badass stuff I post a lot of YouTube videos eleven and specifically building seven they will realize they're being lied to and the entire system is set up to continue lying to them that tells you a lot about not only how much our government feels about us, but also about what our government's real agenda is and what they're really endorsing, which is a never-ending state of war. These people are psychopaths. They don't have compassion and empathy like a healthy human being does. They don't care about you or me. They don't care about the military. They call us heroes to their media and whatnot. They don't care a shit about us at all. And they certainly don't give a shit about the Iraqi people or the Iranian people or, or any people for that matter. So if you want to understand the way the world functions, you need to look at it from the perspective of a psychopath who is drunk on his own power. Now, if you can get into that place and start to look at the way the world functions, you're going to find that it all makes perfect sense. Keep in mind these people also have spent their trillions and trillions of dollars and pounds on building things such as underground compounds, which I don't know if you've got an invitation, but I don't. And these people are so nuts that they are willing, in my opinion, to set off a third world war, look at the policies with regards to antagonizing Russia. What the hell are we doing? We're picking a fight with a nation. Is Russia seriously a threat to Europe or the West? That's just ridiculous. Of course they're not. Why would you do such a thing? Would a sane, healthy human being carry out a policy like that? No. No. But if you're a psychopath who sees that the only way that you can maintain your position of power is to divide people, then you see war as a good thing. For you, war is great. So. Everything you can do to get people to fight a war against each other and keep fighting each other is good for you. Now, if you're sane, that doesn't make sense. So you need to get out of your sane perspective, get into the mind of a psychopath, drunk on his own power, and see the world that way, and all of these things will make perfect sense. That was an ex-Marine saying that shit, yeah. Anyone takes an honest look at 9-11? I don't know. <sighs> I... I... Yeah, I know Australia, but Australia's history is very, very, very similar to America's history. So I have trouble with you guys, honestly. I know things are different now, but how Australia was colonized was crazy, yo. That history is crazy and brutal and genocidal and psychopathical. 
And but now, yeah, you know, the people run the government always have, always will. But it is like how how that shit came to be is fucking crazy. The Tasmanian was completely eradicated. A whole genetic line of the human family was dissipated and erased from this face of the earth, yo. An entire genetic section of our family was erased just for land. It's like, what the fuck? And it was up until like the fucking 60s where the aborigines were still classified as phylum, like as a part of nature, like animal and plant life. That shit is fucking ridiculous, yo. I was like, what the fuck? But oh, everything's all good now. Same thing with America. You know, everything's all good now. Things are different now. You know, we don't do that anymore. Oh, why? Because we have control now. So we have control over everything. And so now, now we can stop killing you guys. We're just going to only, like, bomb the Middle East for a little bit longer. <laughs> That's enough of that. That's enough of that. I'm actually gonna shut this stream down. I gotta I gotta get to the gym for a little while. And then when I get back from the gym, I'll be upstairs in the studio working on some art. But I, I gotta clean up too. I gotta I need to vacuum and do some laundry, wash some clothes. I might even uh, listen to a, a documentary on some Australian history later on, or listen to something like the uh, the Berlin Conference of 1885. That's a good one, you know. Yes, sir. Yo, I appreciate everybody stopping by, chilling with me. I is it's crazy because I actually didn't paint anything. <laughs> Working on no art. I just I just did my hair. Needed some company while I was doing my hair. We all sit down here, listen to some good lectures from Alan Watts. Had a couple good debates. Talked about a few different things. It's always interesting, yo. Uh, if this is your first time subscribing to the channel, this is Art and Education. Like I say, you may not have seen me do any art today so far. But I'll be back on later on this afternoon. Uh, back in the studio, working on some paints and stuff. So definitely, uh, like I said, if you're a new viewer, subscribe to the channel. So you can check me out later on if you don't have anything to do. It's a day off of me, so I can do whatever. <laughs> do I stand or kneel? Oh my god. Ice King, did you really just ask a sun god that shit? Ice King? Ice King, you are asking a sun god if I stand or kneel. That should be so completely obvious. And I'm not going to stand for some crazy ass fucking song that says uh, runaway slaves will meet their demise and bombs bursting in air. Like, nah, nah. And that's before this whole Kaepernick shit. So, nah, I'm stand for no shit like that. That shit don't represent me. Never did. Never will. Uh. So, and I'm not a sports fan either. I, <laughs> you know, I don't have like flag, uh, uh, Dallas Cowboy flags and fucking Dolphins jackets and Raiders, uh, toboggans. I don't fuck with none of that shit, yo. I got a, a few baseball caps and I wear them shits because they match my fucking sneakers and my outfits. And that's probably the only sports shit that I buy. And other than that, I don't I don't watch sports because it's for it's barbaric, it's senseless. You know what I'm saying? This shit don't make no fucking sense. Every sport is the damn near the exact same thing. You got a ball, and it goes from this side of the court or the field to this side of the court or the field. Even if it's a little tennis ball, and it goes from this side to this side to this side. If it's rugby, you're trying to get it from here to here. Basketball. Baseball is kind of different because you get a round stick with a round ball and you try to hit it that way. Or golf, you get a, a flat stick with a little round ball, you try to hit it that way. And it's fucking pointless. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't understand sports. 
never watched the entire sports game in my life. I've never watched the whole basketball game. I've never watched the whole football game. It is retarded. Are people who watch sports retarded? I'm not saying that. Die hard sports fans who have their whole basement decorated with fat heads and those motherfuckers are retarded. I gotta collect this much memorabilia and I gotta autograph helmet. I, man, you fucking idiot. That's what you put your time into. Imagine if die hard sports fans really put their time into figuring out a way for free health care for this country or free education for this country or how we can actually uh pull some of our troops out of all these fucking occupied nations and cut our military budget by some percentage and invest that in infrastructure and bringing back uh companies that keep offshoring our fucking industries and shit but instead of that shit, you just waiting for football season and basketball season to root for motherfucking. I can't even name any of these motherfuckers. Uh, d- d- uh, uh, Kobe Bryant. Oh, he don't play basketball no more. Anyway, whatever, yo. It's fucking retarded. Um, The country was founded in 1776. With the Declaration of Independence. Slavery did not end until 1865. That song is not the reason I am free. At all. And it clearly says in the song. Runaway slaves will meet their demise. That's lyrics to the song. But oh we don't sing that part anymore. Because it's not politically correct anymore. So when that song was written. It wasn't written for black people either. It was written for traitors of the crown who said we're not going to fuck with Europe no more and we're going to keep this country for ourselves because we killed all the Indians and now it's ours. That's who that song was written for. That song is the reason why we're all free. Fuck out of here. No, it's not. That song is, yeah, everyone's history. Yes, it is. It's good for some people. It's bad for some people. You know, Martin Luther King is everyone's history too. Uh, Malcolm X is everyone's history. JFK is everyone's history. But it's good for some people and bad for some people. You know, the Holocaust was everyone's history. Slavery was everyone's history. Columbus was everything. The human family, we all make history together. Everything that happens anywhere Involving human activity is everyone's history. But the problem with history is that some people tell his story and not the whole truth. Doesn't mean you're lying, you're just not telling the whole truth. The song wasn't written for me, the song isn't the reason why I'm free. So the, the song and the flag that represents this fucking country don't mean shit to me, honestly. It don't mean nothing. I'm not going to worship some fucking flag <laughs> or some racist ass fucking song, some national anthem. Shit don't make no fucking sense. Yeah, so that's why we have these places called museums. Yeah, there's a there's a place called museums where we store our artifacts and preserve them for historical reasons so that we can go back and remember these things and understand how things were in the past, how they gradually progress to the present and how we can continuously proceed into the future. But keeping certain remnants of uh, historical events prevalent in active uh, everyday society is nonsense. It's nonsense. Give it up. White privilege is coming to an end. White supremacy is coming to an end. The domination of the European over the world's population is coming to an end 
And so you guys are going to have to just give this shit up now, you know? All your racist semantics, all your symbolisms of racism, you got to give it up. Oh, well, we don't call you niggers in public anymore. Ah, you got to do a little bit more than that. <laughs> you got to do a little bit more than that. Give, give it up. Give it up. Oh, we let Obama be president. Uh, Obama's mixed. His mom was white. Come on. Don't play me with that shit. First black president. Get the fuck out of here. Anybody else who's mixed, you call them mixed. You call them biracial. You know what I'm saying? You call them, uh, uh, what is it, mulatto or whatever. Don't try to play me with these semantics. Get that bullshit the fuck out of here. I'm not falling for it. Uh, no, if you have a good education system that teaches all of history, and then you go to museums for that extra effect if you want to see it, you know, but if you're actually taught real history in school, like a real critical history source, so that everybody is on a level playing field and we really, really understand all the crucial, crucial events and, and real acts of history then everybody will know, you know, everybody will know, like this whole rebel flag shit, it's a part of history, okay, well, are you, I asked people who, who carry the rebel flag, are you American, yes, I'm American, red-blooded American, are you a patriot, do you love this country, yes, I love this country, hardcore American, right, yes, sir, And you carrying a rebel flag. That's just part of my heritage, a part of my history. So that's a fucking oxymoron. Because the Confederate States succeeded from the Union. They said we are not a part of you anymore. We don't want to fuck with you no more. And we're going to carry our own flag. So you can't be both at the same time. Because the First of all, the, the fucking founding fathers uh, portrayed England to start this fucking nation. And then this nation portrayed itself, tried to start a, a subdivision of the nation. And, and now you're like, oh, well, I got to fly this flag for heritage and history. So you're going to fucking honor the fucking the traitors of the nation, right? The ones who went against the whole thing, right? Uh, because it is. Because we live in a racist society. We live in a society that is structured by white supremacy. There is no way not to make things racist. And we didn't make it this way. We didn't come up with the categorization of race. The division of race. Uh, the class systems. Uh... Jim Crow, segregation, none of that shit was our idea at all, at all. We didn't never want to be enslaved and come to this nation, but for some reason now people can't figure out why we always make it about race. Why do you guys always make it about race? No, we didn't come up with uh, Caucasoid, Mongoloid, Negroid. Hey, we didn't come up with that shit. That's not our classification. But we make it about race. Oh, we didn't even call it colored, uh, black, white, yellow, brown. We didn't do that shit. Separate but equal. We didn't do that. But now, all of a sudden, you guys always make it about race. <laughs> oh, my God. People like you are funny as shit, Ice King. Uh, if you don't like us, why don't you go on a... Because uh, I got time invested. Just like you do. And luckily, I have freedom of speech. <laughs> uh, and my girlfriend's white. So, white shield of protection. So you can't say I'm racist. No, seriously, though, my girlfriend is white. Oh, if you don't like us, why don't you just go on a plane and fly somewhere? There's other countries. I'm actually working on that, get my passport in a couple weeks, and I will be globe trotting. My homeboy just went to Thailand for two weeks. He left Tuesday, yesterday, 
no, two days ago. So him and his girl going over there for two weeks. So, uh, yeah, so definitely uh, I'm getting my passport. Oh, why don't you go somewhere else? Well, I'm going to start traveling. <laughs> oh, you trust me. I got a cousin in Turkey. He's been in Turkey for 13 years, 14 years. Even when Turkey was going through there a coup, when the government was like kind of crumbling and there was like tanks and the military was taking over and shit, he was like, yeah, I'm calling them right up, saying this shit on the news on Al Jazeera and shit. I'm like, yo, cuz, you're all right, man. That shit look crazy over there. He was like, dude, man, the other week, man, some of that shit was like in my area where I got to go like do this shit to get to work. I was like, bruh, we ain't want to bring your family back to the States, man. He was like, Nah, dude, I just, I'd rather stay over here. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, yo, it's, they just treat you better over here, man. Shit just different. He's like, after this shit will blow over, man, he's like, it's all political. And they ain't really, like, doing, like, no crazy shit. It's just more, it looked worse than what it is. And he's, you know, still in Turkey. I got a cousin in Germany, a cousin in Japan. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers, well, they find other places in America, and they won't come back, yo. I'm, I'm my cousin in Germany, he's been over there for like over 20 years after he got out of the army. He's a fucking a English teacher in a German high school, yo, teaching English. So yeah, let me get my passport. Let me get, let me start hopping on them planes. I might move to Norway. You never know. Might move to motherfucking Finland or Amsterdam or somewhere. Oh, it's not hard to leave France and uh, it, uh, it's the it's a European Western mentality and it's worse in America because they're trying to hold on to this dominant stance in the world yo America has been after you know the first two world wars America has grown in prominence so much and it's just been a, like a hundred years and and being the world power, they hate to give this shit up, so they keep their Western ideology and their European tactics as hard as they can, because they feel like if they don't keep that part of themselves deeply ingrained in this in this country, then they'll lose everything, and it'll crumble, and they'll lose, and once they lose power in America, then they'll lose power on a global scale, and so now they just use their military to try to force the whole world to do what the fuck they want to do, but other countries, it's the same thing, you know what I'm saying, I got a, I got a aunt, man, she's basically a billionaire, she's really high up in the company she works for, and, and she said that she went, she had to go on a business trip to Australia. And it was her and one of her colleagues. My aunt is a department head, yo. She's the head of a department. She got like 36 people underneath her. And she took one of her lower employees, several levels lower than her, on this. She needed assistance on this business trip to Australia. They get on the plane. They looking at the white lady because now the assistant is white. They looking at the white lady and asking her questions like, my aunt is her assistant. To get to the hotel, she said she had the same sensation, like they're checking in, and the whole they they got two different rooms, of course, and one was like an executive luxury suite, and some was some other shit, and the, the lady at the at the desk gave the better room to the assistant because she's white, and it's like, bitch, I'm the fucking I'm the head nigga in charge, I'm the fucking boss of this shit, but for some reason, just by me being black and she being white, you just assuming. That she's in charge and I'm not. And this is happening all the way in fucking Australia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this shit is everywhere. Everybody is subjugated to this shit if your skin is of a dark color. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a, a global thing, yo. It's a global thing. But it's, I speak more about it from my perspective as an American. Because this is where I was born. And this is the only country I've ever lived in. And this shit is still crazy over here because... They try to make it so subtle nowadays, where it's like, oh, we don't see it. It's not there. And, and then you have that shit that happens in Virginia, and some dude, like, rams a car into a, a crowd of protesters and kills a and kills a lady. But it's not there. You know, you got Trump saying there was five people at that rally, and then calling uh, football players like Kaepernick sons of bitches. 
That's the president saying that. That's the pres. That's the commander in chief of the United States of America saying, "You sons of bitches," on national television. Who the? What the fuck is wrong with this country? But then it's like, oh, you black people sure make everything about race. <laughs> Like, you can't fucking see this shit yet? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm angry with you. Yeah. Uh, do you ever think that you think you're thinking wrong? Uh, no. Yeah, this country is fucked up, not just, you know, right now, but it's been fucked up for since its inception, you know, and that's the thing, it's like, it has always been fucked up, how it even got started, and that's the weirdest thing, like, people think that these events are just happening in some kind of bubble you know, like a 10-year bubble, like, oh, since Bush. No, it's not just like a 10-year bubble. It's the entire history of this country has been fucked up. And then Trump comes with this campaign slogan, let's make America great again. Great for who and when? You know what I'm saying? When was it great and for who? Because if, if we go back 10 years and was America great 10 years, and everybody knows this. Everybody's been through this shit. So you walk it back in time. When was America great? And who was it great for? Okay. It was only, there were certain times when it was really good for uh, one group of people. So it's never been great for everybody, even though this is a, a country made of, of immigrants, you know what I'm saying? And just in the last, you know, 50, 60 years, there's a, a, a lot of help for, for immigrants. Like you see this, this influx of, uh, Indians and Arabs owning quickie marts and laundry mats and Chinese food stores on every corner. But most of the time, that's in that's in the, the urban ghetto areas anywhere where you have like these foreigners come in and supply food sources and products to the to the poor blacks. And that's a weird little paradigm too. how how that whole economic system is set up to to continuously suck economic wealth out of black communities. Uh, by redirecting it through other minority uh, or so-called minority groups. It's a fucking whole weird little thing that goes on there. You got to look into that shit, too. Uh, that's the only thing, yo. We can't control it, man. Your child is your weapon. If you have children, if you are aware, if you know what's going on, we got to enlighten our kids, educate our kids at home and keep them uh, inquisitive and keep them alert about society and how this world really functions and how this world really works. And just like Tupac said, <clears throat> I will not change this world. Uh, more than likely, I'm not going to be the person that changes this world. But I guarantee you, I will spark the mind of the person who will. And that's all we have to do is spark the minds of our children to make this world a better place. And they'll figure out how to do it because for generations and generations and generations, obviously, we have not been getting it right. But now we're in the information age and everybody can obtain whatever kind of information they want to. So teach your damn kids not to be hate mongers, not to fall deceptively into this whole role of, uh, of white supremacy where one group of people is better than the other one, where you go to college to get a good job, to work for a good company, you know? You got to train them better than that, teach them better than that. Uh, because, once again, like I said, my very wealthy aunt, she got most of her wealth through military, working high-level military jobs. Uh, I got three or four uncles who served in the military, all of my, like I say, my cousins abroad, how do you think they got in Germany and Japan from being in the military, <laughs> you know? 
Uh, one of my uncles, 27 year retired, he did army and air force and was a sniper and he's fully disabled because he was a paratrooper and he fell out of a helicopter and fucking injured his back one time. And you know what? I tell all of them, fuck the military. You guys should have never went in there and killed people for fucking money just because America is a power hungry nation. I do not agree with the military of anyone, <laughs> active duty or non active duty. You know what I'm saying? And now some of my older, older family members, like I say, one of my uncles, he's like in his 60s now. And he sees that we live in a police state. He sees the military industrial complex and he sees that he was used as a tool of warfare for no fucking reason. And he's all fucked up behind it now, physically, emotionally and psychologically from being a, a GI government issued property. War is bullshit, and I mean, how much longer are we going to kill each other? If we're a civilized people, if we're a civilized world, and that's the the best way we can come up with solving our fucking problem, is let's make atom bombs, let's make some nukes. Oh, you can't have nukes. Uh, North Korea, you can't have nukes. Iran, you can't have nukes either. But I can have nukes just in case, because just in case I want to fuck y'all up. Because y'all brown and yellow countries, y'all can't have nukes. I'm going to fuck you up, I'm going to fuck you up, I'm going to fuck you up. Russia, you white, you're a white nation, but I'm going to fuck you up too. You keep playing around with them nukes. Only we can have nukes. And everybody else is like, oh, wait a minute. How come you the only person with nukes? And it's this whole dumbass shit, yo, on little wars. And just seeing if this little war is going to build up into a bigger war that, that may build up into a world war where... I might have to fucking use my nukes to prove a fucking point, bitch, because we got bunkers to run and hide in, and you ain't got bunkers to run and hide in. And it's all a bunch of bullshit. So fuck anybody who wants to serve in the military, serve in the armed forces. I don't give a damn. And I'm not, I'm not respecting you for serving, for uh, for for signing your life away, to for these people to do all kind of experiments on you, physical and psychological. And send you to some some brown country to kill brown people. Why disrespect all to your fucking moron? Want to go fucking train to be a fucking train killer? They go kill innocent people, man. Fuck that shit. I almost went to war. I almost, I almost went to the army. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was 2001. I was living in Philadelphia. I was 19 years old, and I was getting tired of selling drugs. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And then one day, I was downtown shopping and ran into a recruiter. And the recruiter started talking to me. He said, man, you seem like a smart guy, man. You ever thought about going to the Army? They pay good. You can make a career out of it. You can go to school. I said, damn, school? I can get a degree? Because I always wanted a degree. I got to get that degree so I can prove to somebody I'm intelligent. He said, yeah, man, the Army will give you a degree. So I said, damn, I might try this Army thing out. So he told me this and he told me that and I went here and I did that and I signed some papers and they had to do a physical and he said, stand up straight, take all your clothes off, open your mouth, hold your palms out, pick your feet up, oh, you look healthy, son, you got all your teeth, here, go take this test. And when I'm in this room full of people, we all in there taking the test and motherfuckers are sweating and I'm like, damn, this shit kind of easy. And I passed with like, I was in the fucking 93 percentile. Motherfuckers like, man, you must be a genius. I'm like, dude. That was 10th grade math. <laughs> and it was like, Mr. Prince, you're pretty smart. We can put you in communications or logistics. You probably have never seen combat. I'm like, damn, this shit is cracking up to be so good. I might like the army. And so they said, you know what, son? We'll call you in two weeks. We're going to take you to New Jersey and get you sworn in. And I was like, it's pretty fucking awesome. And so, a week before I was going to get sworn in, 
You know what happened? It was September 11th, 2001. I'm watching the news. I see these motherfucker airplanes flying to these buildings and shit. I'm like, oh shit, this happening for real in America? That shit in New York? I said, damn. That shit crazy, bro. I said, oh man. These motherfuckers about to go to war. I ain't going to no damn army. Well, my recruiter called me, but two weeks after that, I did not answer the phone. He said, I'm not going to war to fight for nobody and die for this fucking country. He said, oh, but you can be in logistics, communications. You crazy as shit. You put my black ass right on them goddamn front lines in Afghanistan that does it if you want. I'm not playing that shit. Don't try motherfucking Pat Tillman me. Is you fucking stupid? Fuck that shit. Oh, you should proud. You should be proud to be American. You're not slaves no more. And y'all ain't segregated no more. Y'all don't go through Jim Crow no more. But we still get choked out by the police when the man say, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. On camera. I can't breathe. And they kill him. Just kill him. When the man say, hey, officer, I got a license to carry. I got a gun in the car. Don't reach for the gun. I'm going to get my ID. Don't reach for the bow, 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 bow. On camera, and they kill him, man. But you're not, you're not slaves no more, you know? It's just, it's different now. Hey, I'm sorry I've been up for a while. I'm sorry you've been up for a while? I know, I woke you up. What's wrong with you guys? No, what's wrong with you motherfuckers? <laughs> That's what I want to know. What's wrong with you motherfuckers? <sighs> oh, the people that made me free. Nah. You're so out of it, bro. You know what? Africans were always free. We were made enslaved. And so we weren't made free again. <laughs> like, like, what, what are y'all? We gave you we gave you back your freedom. Motherfuckers, I was always a free man. What do you mean? Oh. The ones who made you free. And we're not free. Slavery is still in effect. Uh if you read the 13th Amendment, they clearly worded it specifically for that purpose. Specifically. Read the 13th Amendment. And this is before the documentary. I was telling people this shit 10 years ago. A lot of people are on this shit now. It's like, it's like I've been trying to tell you guys this forever, yo. Forever. You know? But now people want to see this shit. But slavery slavery's not ended. It's, it's, it's never ended. Technically, you know, Mississippi, Mississippi didn't ratify their uh, their slavery code until 2009, 2006, 2009 or something like that. All the states were supposed to sign off on a ratification to end slavery. Like, yeah, OK, we agree. Mississippi ain't do that shit until 2000 or something. Technically, they still they've been that slavery. Bye, babe. I might go to the gym in a minute. Hmm? I might go to the gym in a minute. Anyway, guys, it's been fun. Let me uh go get, well, I'm already in my gym clothes. Let me go to the damn gym, work out for a minute, get these games on. Come back. Make sure, Ice King, make sure you... <laughs>
Make sure you subscribe to the channel so when I come back later this afternoon, you'll be able to catch me in the studio. I'm hollering. Peace. Until next time.